everyone, and welcome to Today with Ward. You don't want to miss today's program. Our special guest, dear friend, Dr. Mark Sharona, will be with us. But before he joins me on the set, you know, every week we take you behind the scenes. We introduce you to our staff around the world. We tell you about new programs that are on God TV. And we have a program we want to tell you about. It's YWAM Together Conference. So watch this clip, and we'll be right back with Dr. Mark Sharona. Imagine what families, communities, cities, and nations would be like if all children had access to a biblical Christian education, where the focus was the discipleship and the transformation of the student rather than the mere transaction of knowledge. We are incomplete without bonding to other ministries. We need a commitment and a passion to communicate God's Word. The only place that we're going to get clarity is as we go back to the scriptures. God has given us new amazing tools to be able to augment that communication, that storytelling. We need to keep discovering. Night and day in the presence of God contending for the breakthrough. Bringing the gospel to the whole world. We need to keep pressing in. Part of our inheritance is in your hands. We're not holding back. You know, at God TV, we are committed to bringing you conferences from around the world. And we pray that the YWAM conference will be an inspiration to you, an encouragement to you. We pray that God would minister to you as we take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Now, on God TV, we have staff and offices around the world. And I want to take you all across to the other side of the globe, to Australia, to our dear brother Wayne Natman as he takes you behind the scenes to Awakening Australia. Watch this, and we'll be right back with Dr. Mark Sharona. Hey guys, my name's Wayne Natman and I'm your Australasian Regional Director and we are here at Margaret Court Arena and I want to take you on a little adventure to go behind the scenes on what happens at one of our events that we broadcast on God TV. So we're going to go meet some people and you'll see a little bit about what goes on. Let's go. watching the body come together and say, yeah, we need Jesus. And we're going to break down our denominational barriers. We're just going to, another lady said, like, rub them out. Mm -hmm. It's not like they disappear. It's okay that there are different denominations and movements. It's all good, you know, that we, we're different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we just blur them out for now. And we say we're just coming here to worship and show the world and show Australia that we're Christian by our God. Distraction's an easy thing to get under, but I, I believe the Lord's just going to rip the veil off people and say, would you give me everything? Would you would you come and lay down your life? And I know Heidi carries that. And we were just in the prayer room before with her at my hotel. We we're all just on our faces for a couple of hours saying, God, would you come tonight and would you surrender people? And so we believe even as people are watching tonight, you'll just get freshly touched by the Lord and recommissioned, re-surrendered to His will to do what is best for Him. And also, we know that that's always best for us. Uh, I had a dream, I was sitting in heaven, mm -hmm. laughing and joyous, and there was a whole lot of us there from all different backgrounds, and we all looked at one another and we thought, and I more or less said to the Lord, I said, 
uh, why are we like this here? And he said, the only reason you're here is because of my name. It's not because they're Baptist or Pentecostal or Catholic or anything else. It's the name of Jesus, the only reason people get into heaven. And so I sat there and looked and we all looked at one another and thought, why didn't we do this on earth? Yeah. Come together on earth and yeah. uh, you know it's powerful when we come just together on his name. Lord we've said it over and over again. We want a movement. We want a movement across this great land. We want a movement across this great land where people would see your love and your glory God. Where our little lives would be laid at your feet and we would stop for you the one who is the one and we would stop for our neighbor and we would love them lord if they're hungry we would feed them if they're homeless we would take them in if they're in need of bread we would give them bread you're a good good father to you Well, I hope you enjoy that sneak peek behind the scenes of Awakening Australia with our dear brother Wayne Knapman. You know, precious partners and viewers, we do this because of you. We are able to take this message. We are able to bombard the airwaves with the gospel of Jesus Christ because of you. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We know that God has a plan for you. And today is no different. Our guest today, Dr. Mark Sharon, is not here by accident. He's not here for fun and games. He's not here for entertainment. He's not here to fill a slot. We believe that this is a divine appointment for you today. Friends, we are praying for you every day, and today is no different. Dr. Sharona, a privilege to have you with us. Lord, <laughs> God bless you. Bless you, sir. <laughs> you know, you, um, you are well esteemed with the God TV family. Well, it's a wonderful family <laughs> to be esteemed by. And I really believe that God's going to speak to our viewers today. You know, we've just had an amazing uh, breakthrough into Israel. Mm -hmm. Today's program will be broadcast to 60% of the homes in Israel. It's awesome. It's been years and years of praying. At the beginning of the year, God spoke to us and He said, begin the year right by blessing Israel mm -hmm. and you'll be blessed. And we have been seeing breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. It has been an amazing journey. We feel the wind of God in our sails, and we know that God's on the move. It's Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, and, and it's a significant season. I mean, if we look at the fact that we are now 500 years from the Great Reformation, mm. and that there is something fresh stirring in the nations, and Haggai said, you know, that there's going to be a shaking of the heavenly and the earthly. And many scholars look at that in terms of the heavenly Jerusalem and the earthly Jerusalem, and that God's going to bring the wealth of the nations mm -hmm. to His people. Yes. And that there's going to be a great global move of God that's going to usher in the greatest harvest we've ever seen. I, 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 I may be um, alone in believing that, but I, there's something in me that says we're on the verge of that. I believe that, man. We're living in the last days, the 11th hour, and uh, breakthrough after breakthrough. God spoke to us just recently and said, you know what? It's harvest time. Mm -hmm. You've been sowing, you've been watering, you've been toiling. Our partners are so faithful to us, Dr. Sharona. They have been with us for this past 21 years. Yeah. And, um, and they love the move of God. <laughs> Amen. They love and you know, where Jesus is going. And one thing we'll never be embarrassed about, friends, is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Listen, we're not into weirdness or strange doctrine, but we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Friends, we can't do anything without Him. And we honor Him, and we will never be embarrassed. We will always let the Holy Spirit have His way. We are people of God's presence, and we pray today God's presence fill your home and your hearts. You know, for our viewers watching today, Dr. Sharona, this morning I was thinking and just about the individual, that one person. You know, I was thinking about Jesus as he was praying. He always said, I do the will of the Father. I mean, every morning he would spend time praying and seeking God. And I thought about this just recently. There was Zacchaeus in a tree. Jesus happened to come along, see him in a tree, tell him to come down and go to his house for a meal. 
that is true according to the Word of God. But another way I was looking at it, maybe, just maybe, Jesus was praying that morning to the Father. And the Father said, you know what, son? Today I am going to send you on a mission. There's a man, Zacchaeus. You're going to see him in a tree at such and such a place. You tell him to come down. You go to his house and watch it. A whole city is going to be saved because of that. I only do what the Father tells me to do. You know, can you talk about that to our viewers? Sure. You know, um, in John 5, 19, Jesus is questioned by the Pharisees because he has just healed a man that's been at the pool of Bethesda, which is right beyond the sheep gate of the second, te the, the Herodian temple um, in front of where the sheep were brought in to be sacrificed. And so originally the pool was a, it was a mikvah designed for ceremonial washing. At some point in the history of the nation of Israel, God sent an angel to trouble those waters that while the worshiper brought their lamb, they got healed when they got in those waters. So what Herod does is he decides to build a structure that becomes sort of a healthcare system, but it's a lottery. Mm. And whenever whoever gets in first gets healed, they're the ones that are healed. So there's a multitude of what John tells us in John 5 of the invalid, the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. Let me break that down and make it really simple. Without strength, mm -hmm. without vision, without motion, and without nerve. So they lost their strength, they lost their vision, they lost their motivation, and they lost their confidence. And all of them are lying there. Now imagine for a moment, Jesus does nothing but what he sees the Father doing. Mm -hmm. And he has to walk through a number of sick people that he wants to heal. Because there's nothing in him that wouldn't want to heal them all. Yeah. And yet the Father determines the one healing will be a sign for the rest. Mm. And the man is there 38 years. John, why do you tell us the man is there 38 years? What are you trying to tell us about new creation? Mm -hmm. Because John is very concerned about new creation. There are seven miracles. I have a love affair with the Gospel of John. There are seven miracles in the Gospel of John, but all of them point to the wonder worker who did everything he did by the power of the indwelling spirit. The God man who did everything as a human being filled with the Spirit, emptied himself of his divine power and relied on the, the third person of the Godhead to do it all so that you and I could do the same and do the greater works. Amen. And Jesus walks up to a man 38 years, and John wants us to know he's 38 years. Why? Because in the book of Deuteronomy in the second chapter, the sons of Israel, one of the saddest verses in all of Scripture mm -hmm. is that it's an 11 days journey from Egypt to Kadesh Barnea, only 11 days to the promised mm -hmm. land. God wasn't going to take 11 days. He was going to take two years to test them, to humble them, to show them what was in their heart. But they kept rebelling and complaining, and God added 38 more years mm -hmm. to their two years. So they were 40 years in the wilderness. So here's a man, 38 years, and he is unable to move into his future. And he's dependent on something outside of his power to bring him into that future. Mm -hmm. And so he represents the entire generation of those that died in the wilderness with a slave's mindset and never came into the sonship. Because the, the children of Israel leave wow. Egypt. The sons of Israel possess the land. Wow. And there's a major difference in the, in the nomenclature when you move through the books of Moses. So they go from being the children of Israel, having gone through the wilderness, they're supposed to mature and grow into sonship to take dominion and live in that land that flows with milk and honey. And that entire generation died, and the generation born in the wilderness go in. And here's a man who literally typifies a generation that will never enter in. And it's the fullness of time because the God-man has shown up. But he doesn't know who Jesus is. And, he, and Jesus doesn't tell him who he is. Jesus simply asks him a very compelling question. And I believe God's asking all of us the same thing. Because whether, you're, whether you are without strength, whether you are without a renewed sense of vision, whether you are without motivation, or whether you are without confidence because you lost your nerve, all four of those things represent a progression. Because when we lose our strength, we lose our vision, 
When we lose our vision, we lose our motivation. Mm. When we lose our motivation, we lose our nerve. You know, the relaxing of the nerves. We, we, get, we, get, we end up in paralysis and we analyze everything because we don't feel like we can get to where we want to be. So we're in between where we were and where we want to be, but we're stuck. Mm. And Jesus simply asks the man, do you wish mm. to be well? Wow. Derek Prince used to say, our wishes are louder than our prayers in heaven. And if we would understand hmm. how powerful a wish is and how God wants us to wish well, that a wish is the essence of the prayer of desire. And Jesus says to the man, I want you to wish well. Do you wish to be made whole? And the man gives him all the reasons why he can't because someone else gets there first. He's got an entire litany. The question unlocks all the negativity in the man's heart. And a lot of times we get mad at people when they want to, of course he wants to be healed, but there's all this baggage that's self-sabotaging him and all the conditioning of 38 years as to how come he can't. Yeah. And Jesus says, all I want you to do is admit you wish it. And then the miracle happens. God, this is great preaching. I've never heard that. <laughs> Whew, friends, what are you wishing for? What are you wishing for? What did Mark Sharona just say? Your wishes in heaven are known. Friends, we're going to have more with Dr. Sharona, and we're going to apply this right into your life. We're going to bring this right around and take it into your home, into your office, right through your television set. God has set this up today for you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. He knows you by name. He knows your phone number. And God is going to do something powerful in your life today. Stay tuned with more with Dr. Mark Sharona. But before that, we want to encourage all of you that are watching today, maybe this is your first time watching. God TV is taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. We are bombarding the airwaves with the gospel. We are taking it to the corners of the earth, and we do it with your help. If you would like to be a partner with God TV, watch this video, and this will show you how you can join this team of media missionaries as we go across the globe for the glory and kingdom of Jesus Christ. We'll be right back with Dr. Mark Sharona. For over two decades, God TV has committed to bringing the transforming message of Jesus into homes across the world, providing hope in the most desperate of situations. Physically abused, addicted and alone, Sally saw no way out. I was trying to die. I didn't like anything about me. I didn't know how to live and I was too scared to die. And then one day I was just sitting there, the telly was on. When you accept Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Saviour, you are redeemed from the curse of sin and death. For Kaylee, she saw no future for her young life. I decided I wanted to commit suicide. As I sat in darkness, deciding how to do it, a voice spoke to me and it said, why don't you watch God TV? And I knew it wasn't my voice because I didn't really like anything Christian and it scared me so much, I thought, well, maybe I should. As I sat in the darkness and listened about who God was, he, he came in the room and I met him. I met my creator. God is reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's trespasses against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Will you join with us in becoming a messenger of the gospel? Partner with God TV and see lives like Sally's and Kaylee's changed to the outer ends of the earth. Go to god.tv slash donate or call the number on your screen today. Praise God. We're back with Dr. Mark Sharona. Mark, um, just wonderful preaching, man. I, I felt like I could sit back and let you preach. I feel we should give you a podium and let you preach. So listen, I'm sure our viewers are wondering, I'm wondering, how do we go from wishing well to being well? All right. So, <laughs> so the great physician doesn't need to tell 
the man who he is. The man doesn't know who he is. But the words he speaks are spirit and life. And what he does is ask the quintessential question, do you wish to get well, which invites the man to take ownership at a deep level of what he really, 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 really wants. Mm -hmm. And Ward, what I've discovered is that most people, when you ask them, what do you really want? Here's, their, here's the typical answer, and they think it's really spiritual. I just want what God wants. And that is the worst answer you could ever give because God gives us the desires of our heart and he wants us to bring them to speech. Elijah, as he's crossing over the Jordan, says to Elisha, what do you want? Elisha doesn't say, well, I just want what God wants. He says, no, I want a double portion of your spirit. So when Jesus says, ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking, knock and keep on knocking, the reason we don't get is because we don't ask. You receive not because you ask not, you receive not because you ask amiss. The more crystallized your thinking, the more clear and specific you can be, the more you'll recognize when your prayer is answered. You ask a vague question, you're going to get a vague answer. But God's looking for you to be able to own what you really, really want. Do you wish to get well? And when he asked that question, when the great physician asked that question, out of the man's soul come all the reasons he disqualifies himself. Right. I'm, I'm, I can't get there on my own. And the fact is, even when somebody's helping me, I have nobody. In other words, he believes he is totally isolated, totally disillusioned, totally incapable. And Jesus says, those are all your excuses. But here's what I'm telling you. Arise, take up your pallet, and walk. Now, that word arise is one of the verb tenses for the word resurrection. He is actually commanding him to move at life in a new dimension, in resurrection life. Hmm. Before he gets to the resurrection, he's releasing resurrection wow. in his words. His words are so powerful, they are causing the man, while he's speaking them, to rise to a new level and come out of being without strength, without vision, without motivation, and without nerve. His word literally shatters every preconceived negative, self-sabotaging belief hmm. that is getting in the way, because resurrection is life that cannot be held back by dead things, and the man is stuck in dead things. He says, arise, and then he says, take up your pallet. In other words, the thing you're lying on has been lying to you, and I need you to get it under your arm. I need you to take control of what you have has put you in a prone position because in that prone position you have become subject to all sorts of demonization and all sorts of devaluation and I need you to know that what you've been lying on for 38 years has been lying to you about oh. your future. Take that thing up and then he says arise, take the pallet and walk. And that word walk, peripeteo in the Greek, literally means make due use of your opportunities. In other words, quit missing moments and start making moments. But it all begins with wishing well. And so I want to pray for the family of God TV because I believe this is a season when we need to learn how to wish well. And beloved, I want you to understand it really is okay to admit what you really, really want and not cop out and just say, well, I just want whatever God wants. That is, That sounds really spiritual but it has nothing to do with what Scripture says about prayer and about asking. What do you really, 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 really want? I'll tell you this much. When you touch the deepest desire of your heart, you're going to start to cry. You want to know why? Because most of us have come to believe because of the conditioning and the disappointments and the setbacks and the failures that we really can't have what we want, so we never bring it to speech. Because it hurts too much to admit we want something we don't believe we can have. And yet somewhere in the mystery of God's dealing with us. He says, I want you to bring that to speech because prayer brings everything to speech. And if you will own the fact, Elisha says to the widow woman, when the time revives, you'll bear a son. She says, don't lie to me. The one thing she wanted most, she didn't even tell him about because she didn't think she could have it. And God wants you to know, he wants to give you the desire of your heart. That word desire in the Latin actually means something's missing. You want to know what you want? What's missing in your life right now? That you want it so bad you can taste it, but something in you says, I can't get there from here. The bridge between there and here is faith in the one who can do it apart from your ability to do it yourself. Because faith comes by grace to empower you 
to rise above all the self-sabotaging thoughts and belief systems, get up from the prone position of being lied to about your future, and start making moments instead of missing them. Father, I pray for my precious brothers and sisters, your dear sons and daughters, that this would be a season when they would wish well. I pray you give them the courage to bring their deepest desires to speech, even if it hurts to bring it to speech because they've been disappointed, they've been disillusioned, and they've been disenfranchised. Papa God, I pray right now that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would help them to bring to speech because we don't know how to pray as we ought. We need your Spirit to help us. So Holy Spirit, help them bring these things to speech. And Father, in that moment of them bringing it to speech, I thank you that you're going to impart the spirit of faith that's going to enable them by the love of Jesus to rise above dead things and begin to take up the thing and take dominion over the thing that's been lying to them, that put them in a prone position, and they're going to begin to make moments instead of miss moments. I declare you are going to enter into a season of wishing well and making moments that you missed in previous days because Kairos moments are on the way in clusters of confirmations for the saints of God in this season. Wow. Wow. Praise God. Friends, I pray that you have felt that prayer as it came through your screen as God began to minister to you as we go beyond wishing well to become well. Maybe it's not a, a healing it could be anything, as Dr. Sharona was talking about. That thing in your life that you've been missing on. We'll continue to pray for you. Our intercessors around the world will continue to pray for you. Today is a great day in your life. This is a new day. This is a new beginning. Dr. Sharona just ministered the word of God to you. It's time to arise. It is time to take up your mat and walk in Jesus' name. And friend, there may be something holding you back today. Maybe there's a hook. Maybe there's a vice. Maybe there's something that the enemy has connected himself to you today. But friend, right now, in the name of Jesus, we break it off of you right now. And we tell you to arise. Stop wishing to be well and become well yeah, yeah. in Jesus' mighty name. Dr. Sharona, we are taking our God TV team to Israel. Wonderful. We're going to show them a quick video of our Israel tour, and we'll be right back to close out this program. All right. Watch this. We'll be right back with Dr. Mark Sharona. Zion 2018. Book your place today and take advantage of our special discount at AriseZion2018.com. Dr. Sharona, thank you for being on the program. It's been an honor, Ward. Mm -hmm. Final word from you? You know, I, I just want to encourage my brothers and sisters, there's a healing presence. He sends his word and heals us from the inside out. And his word is a healing word. His word is an affirming word. His word is an empowering word. Even when he adjusts you, 
He's empowering you. There's someone watching. You have had a deviated septum from the time you were born, and you have had a number of surgeries, and they've never corrected it. But the Lord is healing you right now. There's always someone who has had paralysis in your left hand and your, your, your pinky and your forefinger, and God is healing you right now. If you need healing, call that number on the screen. We love you. Wow, awesome. Friends, we pray that today's program was a blessing to you, an encouragement to you, and an inspiration to you. So until next time with Today with Ward, please tell someone about Jesus.